join them, and then after a year or two, you drop them because you've already gotten your three hundred dollars oh, from this thing. Oh, well, keeping track of all them. Yeah. Whew. Even, Bless even, you. you know, I wish I knew this when I was younger, but it wouldn't have worked for me when I was younger. All right. Well, I, where I see we're online. Welcome. To Rome and Doris and Dave and all of you guys on Facebook, thanks for coming. I appreciate you guys. And and uh, we'll uh, have our prayer meeting. And we do have several prayer requests uh, we want to mention. And uh, before we do that, uh, we're going to have uh, our opening hymn, uh, which is Work for the Night is Coming. And I was telling Brother Dave, uh, I picked that song because it's mentioned in the scripture that we're going to study tonight in a little while so work for the night is coming if you don't know it just just hang on <laughs> all right here we go work for the night is coming work through morning hours work while the dew is sparkling work mid springing flowers Work when the day grows brighter. Work in the glowing sun. Work for the night is coming. When man's work is done. Work for the night is coming. Under the sunset skies. While their bright tents are glowing, work for daylight flies. Work till the last beam fadeth, fadeth to shine no more. Work while the night is darkening, when man's work is o'er. Well, you guys did very well. Excellent. Thank we had, you. We had a strong week. <laughs> well, loud anyway. All right. So uh, we always have announcements, and uh, I've got these announcements from Miss Diana. So thank you, Miss Diana, for these. Um, and they're from the newsletter. I'm sure all of you get a newsletter every week. Um, in the upcoming events section, Monday night, October the 11th, is a paint night. Paint night at the Elks Lodge on Willowdale Drive in Frederick. The cost is $40. Uh, and uh, so food will be available to purchase uh, from 6 to 7, and a painting time starting at 7 p.m. So see Miss Diana if you have questions or you'd like to sign. I think the sign-up list is in it. There she I'll is, Stephanie. I'll get a chair. I'll get a chair. Right, right, here. right, right there. there. Okay. Hey, guys, what's up? How you doing? I'm, set, I'm, t I'm time, correct? You are. Okay. Well, you missed the song, but it's oh, I miss your voice. Oh well, okay. you can do it. You get. Yeah. We'll have an Hi, guys. So. <laughs> okay. All right. I love you, Stephanie. I love you too. Oh my Not goodness. Not a problem with that. Welcome, my friend. <laughs> All right. So uh, special announcements, uh, specific needs for our children. We do need some nursery help. So uh, I know my wife is one of those nursery people. A team of three each Sunday from ten to twelve. So if you can serve in the nursery, let Miss Starr know. And uh, Facebook check-ins continue on. Uh, support Compassion International this month. I, I don't I don't know of any organization that I like better than Compassion International. Oh, what okay. a great organization! I'm, I'm where Debbie and I've been blessed to. I think we're on our third child. Now. Oh really? really? And uh, so did they age out? Or they you aged out. Oh, okay. Yeah, they aged out. Because we have little Byron. Oh, do you? All right, cool. Yes, yes. yes. Oh, I was trying to think of our little girl's name, and I, her name's slipping. Sanjay was our first boy, and uh, anyway, so mm -hmm. we're glad uh, to support them. Yes, um, life mo life groups are, are meeting, men's life group, Sunday morning. Uh, mm -hmm. Jerome is one of our pancake people. David comes for pancakes once in a while. Pancakes, Bible <laughs> study, and prayer. I mm -hmm. talked to Brother Ed today, and wow. uh, he'll be back Sunday, so... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's we're right. talk, we're continuing our study on the fruit of the spirit. Yeah, cool. love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Yeah. Yeah. we do have a Sunday night men's group as well. Uh, we're studying First and Second Peter. Uh, we have a good group going? there. That's good. it's yeah. really going That's well, good. and uh, thankful for the guys uh, that are coming there. And uh, I think Brother Larry will be leading this okay. week. 
All right. And then Miss Robin Murphy has a play group on Tuesdays. Meets at 1030 a.m. It's it's a varying location, mm-hmm. so you have to kind of get in touch with Miss Robin. Robin L. Murphy 63 at gmail dot or yeah, at gmail dot com. Um, or uh, if you just let me know that you need to get in touch with her, I'll give you her contact data. Uh, ladies on Tuesday nights for those ladies yeah. that are going through there. And uh, starting next week. Yeah. Oh, cool. Get something. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And I know Stephanie yeah. leads that group, and yeah. I know she does a great job. All right. And uh, Stephen Ministry continues, so pray for that group. Uh, Awana, it, tonight's Awana night, and you'll hear them before the meeting is, our meeting okay. is over with. You'll hear them in the yeah. background. Yeah. They'll be <laughs> singing or running or playing, or you might hear them in between time. So, uh uh, thank you for uh, Awana. We really appreciate Awana. And then Valley Kids uh, Sunday morning program uh, uses Kid Check, and uh, that's a uh, uh, check-in for the parents. So uh, if you have questions about that, you can see Miss Star. And Smydeck also uh, has Sunday school at ten to ten forty-five, and also Wednesday nights at six o'clock. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you're interested in providing a meal for Smydeck, uh, see uh, Danielle Williams or Katie. And uh, they'll let you know. I think they like tacos or pizza, stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I want a trunk or treats coming up on October 27th. We could use some candy donations if you guys uh, would like to donate some candy. Um, it's basically going to be for our Awana kids and, uh, and their immediate friends. And we do have some volunteer sheets in the lobby if you'd like to help with that. And... Uh, on a separate note, Cat Spencer's asking for small eight ounce uh, bottles of water, individually wrapped snacks for North Frederick Elementary School wow. children. So if you can provide any of those things, that would be helpful. All right. Any other announcement? Did I leave anything out? Mm-hmm. What do you think? Good? Oh, All right. Great. So our devotion tonight comes from John chapter nine. Um, I always pray about, oh, what, what shall we talk uh-huh. about on Wednesday nights? And a lot of times it comes from my morning Bible reading, yeah. and of course it does. I've been reading through oh, uh, through John pastor, on Sunday amazing. on Sunday morning, or not <laughs> just Sunday, but every morning uh, this this uh, week I've been reading through John. So John chapter nine is just a fascinating chapter. Um, I just love it. Now you know me. We're going to read the whole chapter, yeah, and yeah. Uh, it, it's really about one event. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you th- this is about Jesus. And the man born blind. Okay? And so we'll stop and talk uh, along the way uh, (laughs) rather than come back. So, as he went along, that he is Jesus, as he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now, I just thought those two verses uh, reveal a generally held concept from from that culture. And it's mm-hmm. also a concept that we run into today. Mm-hmm. The question, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born mm-hmm. blind? So if, if, the, if, the, if you had some kind of disability or some kind of uh, uh, trouble, uh, the culture assumed that God must be mad at you. You must have done something wrong to incur this uh, this penalty. Uh, you think about uh, uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth, right? Uh, she was 60 some years old and hadn't had a child, right? Now we know God was going to use Zechariah and Elizabeth to bring John the Baptist into the world. So it wasn't that God was mad at Zechariah and Elizabeth, it was God was going to use them. Uh, so uh, the prevailing thought was, there must be something wrong with this this guy that he was born blind or something wrong with his parents that produced this child. Now, 
we kind of extrapolate that to today. Um, I think we can't say that just because a person has a disability means that God is mad at them, that they're sinners. Now, does God judge sin? Of course. Does God uh, chasten his people when they sin? Yes. He does. Yes. I think about uh, David. I thought about David today. You know, uh, when David and Bathsheba uh, entered into uh, uh, their sinful relationship, yeah. uh, a child was a result of that. Yeah. Now, that child died. David prayed for that child, and that child died. In my mind, that was probably a result of uh, the fact that that was a sinful yeah. relationship. Certainly, David's relationship with his children after that. You know, yeah. God said, you're not going to die. He confessed his sin. Mm -hmm. You're not going to die. But this is going to keep yeah. coming up in your family. Yeah. And it certainly did. David's family was, it was messed up, really, if you think about after it. After that. After that. Consequences. Exactly yeah. right. There are consequences really to sin. Yeah. But you can't assume yeah. that a leads to B. Right. So I think when something goes wrong in our lives, it's good for us to do an inventory. You know, is the Holy Spirit convicted me of sin? Am I, have I gone down the wrong path? Have I, have I entered into... So it's good for me to do inventory. Do I need yeah. to, to, to get right with God, ask Him His forgiveness? And that's and the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy yeah. Spirit works, and it draws us that way. So it's not... We usually know, yeah, right? We, do. We, we, do. we know. God, yeah, God I tells us. I, I, I know. I know. Yeah. I know. I know. That's right. <laughs> and David knew too. <laughs> and David knew. Oh, he did. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, thou art the man. You yeah. know, Nathan uh, uh, talked to him. So, uh, but I think it's it's fascinating here. Uh, the whole community thought, well, something's, you know, this guy did something wrong or his parents did something wrong. And Jesus says, nope, because uh, you're going to see the hand of God. And uh, so, uh, after, say, after saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Sil Siloam. This word means scent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, nope, it only looks like it. But he insisted, I am the man. How were your eyes open, they asked. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siolum and wash. So I went and washed and then I could see. Isn't that good? Where is the man? So the thing that I thought about when I was reading about this was, uh, you remember Naaman the leper? Mm -hmm. Name of the leper. Mm -hmm. He was, uh, uh, you know, was a great uh, commander of armies, mm -hmm. and he got leprosy, mm -hmm. right? And 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 his king sent a letter to the king of Israel and said, "Look, uh, we want you to recover uh, this guy of his leprosy." And you remember what the king of Israel went? Whoa! I can't do that. Yeah, that's right. He says, "Man, they're they're looking for a fight because there's no way I can do that." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Elijah, right, was there, and uh, Elijah intervened and said, "Well, send him to me." All right. And so, what did Elijah tell him to do? You guys remember? Go and wash seven times yeah. in the Jordan. Oh, Go and wash right. seven that's times right. in the okay. Jordan River. And then, so, so what was Naaman's response to that? Heck no. Heck I'm no. Home. I got rivers in my own country that and are I'm better important. than that, and I'm important, yeah. so I can do that at home. Okay. He didn't even come out to see him. He, yeah, he, he, didn't exactly. he sent his servant out. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And, and so he, he kind of stomped and went away mad. And there was a, a young servant girl, a girl from Israel, in the household. And, uh, you know, she said, man. If he had told you to go do some great thing, what you would have done? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> but we think here, that. Well, we think that's that, right. right? That's right. <laughs> and you, if he'd have told you to do some great thing, why not rather than just wash and be clean? Uh -huh. I think that was the same girl that put him on to the fact that he... Yes, it was. It was. It was. It's the same girl who told him that. All right. So, uh, 
God's uh, requirements aren't complicated, right? No, Salvation no. is not complicated. No, it's it's not. simple, but it's profound. Yes. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. It's all about obedience. It's all about yeah. obedience. That's right. Exactly right. It's all about obedience. So the guy said, look, Jesus, this guy named Jesus told me to do something, and what? I did it, right? And then I could see. Where is this man, they asked him. I don't know, he said. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. The next day, on which Jesus, now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Isn't that always the problem? Mm -hmm. It's the Sabbath. Yeah. Therefore, the Pharisees asked him how he had received his sight. Quote, he put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees says, said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others ask, how can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. They turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, he is a prophet. I think he was just trying to figure it out, frankly. Uh, he was a prophet. They still did not believe that he had been blind and received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son, they asked. Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it now he can see? We know he is our son, the parents answered, and we know that he was born blind, but how he can see now or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders who had already decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. You see the dilemma. This is why his, that was why his parents said, he's of age, ask him. A second time they summoned the man who had been born blind. Give glory to God by telling the truth, they said. We know this man is a sinner. He replied, I love this. Mm -hmm. He replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. Now that's honest, isn't it? Yes. Whether he's a sinner mm -hmm. or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, mm -hmm. I was blind, but now I see. Yeah. And I thought about that today, the power of testimony. My brother, brother uh, Jerome's testimony on Sunday was powerful. And one of the main reasons was it was his testimony. It's his story. And, and you know, uh, this fellow said, well, who is Jesus? And he said, well, he didn't know a theological answer. He didn't know uh, how to answer them except, look, I used to be blind. And now I yes. see. And this guy did that. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't, uh, he wasn't an educated man. He was a beggar. Exactly right. He couldn't see. He couldn't study. He, he had no skill. Right. And, mm -hmm. Exactly. He didn't know. He didn't yeah. know. You, know you look at you look at the. Uh, you ask yourself, ask yourself, what's God trying to do here? Mm -hmm. and see, Jesus put mud on his eyes and told him to go wash. Now, that's what he's going to do. You right. Have to tell him that. You know, there's not. You know, go dip yourself in the Jordan and you. Right. This is, you got mud on your eyes. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> That's you're right. You're going to it off? No. Okay. Right. You're going to wash it off. Right. So it's like God was determined to do something. And this guy, he got his sight back. And the purpose of all this wasn't about the guy. It was about, I think, the Pharisees. Right. God was determined to give the Pharisees every option, every Every grace so they could see the truth. Yes. And they would not see the truth. Yes. Right. Because it's like that that miracle made them speechless. They, they were furious because they yeah. you know, they, there was no excuse. They couldn't they, they, yeah. right. they had to they had to reconcile. That's the right. Healing on the Sabbath. Maybe what we think isn't right. Maybe maybe we're not holy as we think. But they couldn't go there. They can't go there. So, yeah. so, so you know, God, God said that He would hold them the, them accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, that generation for all the sins, because He's giving them so much grace, and He won't see it. 
That's, that's what I see. I do too. Absolutely. That's that's really good. And and you know they were more protective of uh, Temple Incorporated and their yeah. their hold on the market, so to speak, mm-hmm. than they were about. This is a guy that we know was blind and now he can see. And instead of being appraised, is a problem. And uh, so, so they can't acknowledge that, or things will crumble. For that's them. right. That's right. They can't acknowledge it. Yeah. And uh, uh, you know, don't confuse me with the truth. My mind is already exactly. made up. And it probably uh, doesn't say, but probably one or two guys took him to the pool. And probably so. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Couldn't find yeah. it. Yeah. You're exactly There's right. There's an element of boldness what Jesus did healing on the Sabbath. Uh, no question. You, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And a lot of those religious religious people in general, they don't like boldness. It intimidates them. Right. I see that a lot even here today. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's interesting. It's a radical act yep. that they would never do. It's the Sabbath that's causing yes. them the problem, yes. right? Because you, you can't. It, and it's mm-hmm. funny because there's certain things they could do on the Sabbath. Uh-huh. I was reading the other day that they actually performed the rite of circumcision on the Sabbath. If, it, oh. if the eighth day was was a Sabbath day, they did circumcision oh, okay. on the Sabbath. But other, you know, they could only walk so far. They couldn't. You know, there were certain things yeah. they couldn't do. And the priests violate the Sabbath, but they're innocent. Right. Because they're working. They're working. Yeah. That's right. They're, they're sacrificed. They're sacrifice. Exactly right. And they're declared innocent. Yes. Well, why? Because they're, they have a ministry of reconciliation is what they're doing. Well, what did Jesus just demonstrate? <laughs> that's right. But they just didn't. Yeah. Get, yeah. See, their eyes are blind. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> that, absolutely. I think there's a ticket right there. Yeah. There's uh, there are different kinds of blindness. Yeah. This so, fellow was, was physically blind, but they were spiritually yes, blind. Yes. Uh, oh, isn't yes. it interesting that that's the miracle God chose to witness the truth to them? Amen. And still yes, can see. Yes. Amen. Oh, man. Exactly uh-huh. right. That's good. Uh, here we go. Where was that? Well, verse 25. He replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I love this. I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. They asked him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I have told you already and you do not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? I, that's one time I really wish I could un, could have heard the inflection, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know. <laughs> and they hurled insults at him and said, you are this fellow's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for f- this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. The man answered, now that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. And I think we need to be careful about that. Sometimes God does listen to sinners because we are them, right? So, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, he's speaking the, uh, the accepted line, the accepted line of the day. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Because, you know, it's like uh, when Jesus said, uh, uh, I didn't come to heal those that are well, right? I came to heal those that are sick and we're all sick, but they didn't think they were right. Uh, so uh, we know that God does not listen to sin. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, you were steeped in sin at birth. <laughs> How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found them, him, he said, now here is physical blindness healed. This is spiritual blindness healed. Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the Lord, then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. And it's a very simple thing. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and said, What are we blind to? Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin, but now you claim you can see, your guilt remains. 
Devastating. 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 What's that? And they proved that's right, that Jesus listens to sinners. Exactly right. Exactly right. So I've always enjoyed that that passage. It's simple, but it illustrates what 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 does it take to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's, That's it. Right? It's a, uh, someone said, you know, it's a, uh, it's a, it's someone who's hungry who finds bread. Yes. Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. Yeah. And it's a very, very simple thing. And yet it's profound. Uh, all the religion in the world, you know, all those Pharisees had a lot of religion, but they didn't have Jesus. The, the man born blind didn't have any religion. And yet he found Jesus. Jesus found him. And simple faith uh, you know, caused that transformation. I don't want to get off topic. Go right But I just want to ask you something. Believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and shall be saved. There's other words. It says repent. Repent and believe upon the Lord. I mean, is either one okay? When you're telling somebody I think it's gospel? one leads to the other. Okay. All right. right? That's all I, okay. The repent means to turn away okay. from... <laughs> sin and turn towards God. Okay. Yes. So in that moment, in that repentance, yes. then belief, you know, okay. comes. Because I I read believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. And then you you know, just listen. I think one leads to the yeah, other. Okay. Right. Right. Because yeah. you have to be just convicted ask. of sin. Yeah. You know, before you realize you're a sinner. Correct. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah. All right. Gotcha. And exactly. you've said many times yeah. that it can't I'm be trying. believed. It needs to be believed. Right. Yes. Yes. From this yes. From yes. Here yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. Right. All right. Cool. That's yeah, good. That's a great question. No, I'm glad you asked that. It's mm-hmm. good. We, and it's never wrong to ask a question. Mm-hmm. I agree. Thank yes. you. Thanks. All right. So that's simple, easy. Any other comments? You guys had some wonderful comments. <laughs> Any other comments about John chapter nine? I'm just really glad that you shared it. Yeah, I know that. That's what I was thinking. See that um, the way this man, the, the man who was healed, relates with and understands the religious leaders changed radically. Even before Jesus found him again. Because at first he was like, kind of, like, I don't know who he is, but you know, he, I don't know if he's a sinner or not. And then it became, uh, now that is remarkable. We know God doesn't believe you. Know, so he has condemned them because they're blind. Exactly. So that, that happened kind of inside the, those that time where he went out, they debated, they came back, he came back in. But these guys don't know anything. That's right. <laughs> That's they're right. self-righteous. That's exactly right. And I think too often we have a lot of that in the church today. And, and we see people who um, uh, kind of get stuck in that. Mm-hmm. And then they get... Uh, they get in the church because they, they believe, but it's not. It's only in their you know in their head. It's not with their heart. That they, right. They don't really trust him with anything. They, they don't really believe. It. Well, the concept of him is for sure, but right. they really haven't understood. Right. Just uh, how badly we all need a savior. Amen. And, and, and <laughs> yeah. it becomes so shallow, and and so little is required that when real persecution comes, they scatter. And. Um, uh, and I see it just parallels with the, the church today uh, and the religious leaders. Sure, you know. And uh, but I like the fact that it is very it is very simple. The God makes a turn, 180 degrees. Right. And says, oh, "I'm going to follow this guy." Even before Jesus finds him. Right. He he was ready to work. He was ready. He absolutely. Yeah. I think he was glad he came back. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's good. And I love the fact that Jesus went after him. He sought yeah. him. And, yes. Uh, and he's still seeking us, you know. I think he's, he seeks yes. uh, he seeks us, and he and he loves us enough to come after us. He does. And uh, love yes, that. And I know there he God seeks. put people in my life to tell me about Jesus yeah. before I ever became saved, and, and uh, so I'm just very I'm very thankful for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like he seeks me being saved too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, oh yeah, he cares for you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, because now you're his child yeah. and uh, he comes looking for mm-hmm. you. That's right. He does. Yeah. It displays different things. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I see that. He shows a lot his now. power. Absolutely. Yeah, I see that a lot these yep. days. Yeah. Good. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for putting up with so my uh, <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I, I enjoyed excellent. that. 
All right, so prayer requests. We've had several prayer requests uh, this week, and I'll just share what what I have, and, and uh, then if you guys have others, then we'll, we'll close out in prayer. Uh, I've sent out several emails uh, um, uh, from G. Champion about her brother-in-law, Bruce, uh, who has a brain tumor and is in a nursing home. So I ask you to continue to remember Bruce. And uh, one of our people, uh, Nora Wright, is uh, uh, in a nursing home in Walkersville. She'll probably, this will probably be her forever home now. I mean, okay. She probably won't come home from that. Uh, the young lady that was baptized, yeah. that is, she is Nora's granddaughter-in-law. Okay. All right, so. The first one they got baptized? The first one, yeah. yeah. Heidi, Heidi right. Wright. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, Jimmy Beecham's looking better, so we're thankful for Amen. God and healing him. Uh, Brother Cliff Stewart is in the hospital in Calvert County. And, um, Calvert County? And Calvert County. <laughs> He has a connection He's with that. Connection. He, he grew. Oh, he has a connection. He has a connection yeah. with them. So, um, <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, uh, and he does have COVID, so uh, uh, but he's not on a ventilator, and we're we're hoping that he has a real uh, quick uh, trip with uh, with COVID there. Uh, Tanja Main, uh, pray for her. She's caring for her mother mm. Rose uh, at their home, and I talked to Tanja today. Said that Rose is getting stronger. Uh, but also pray for Tanja. Uh, you know, you guys know caregiving is a difficult thing. Oh, it's very, it is. very oh, tiring, oh. and, and cool. so uh, so yeah. pray for oh, Betty. Doing well, I think Betty's getting better. Yes. Yeah, Betty oh, okay. is uh, is making some improvements. It's what I've heard, and, and that's a praise with with both of those. Betty Amen. And, and with Rose. Right. Oh, my goodness, that's just so wonderful to see God Amen. working in those families Amen. and do pray for Wendy as a caregiver yes. I, I don't know her when they're coming back her. what's her that back. her back is bothering yeah, her just, yeah, yeah. Okay. she said that's chronic oh. because she's taking well, yeah. yeah because yeah. 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 and you know. Wendy even knows the proper way oh yeah she's yeah. Yeah. Still, still exactly and Betty's a, a small woman but still still it puts yes. a strain it's on a her yeah. yes. Yes. so remember uh all the caregivers, including Wendy, and and you know uh, those nurses that are there, are hearing the good news of Jesus when, oh, yeah. they, when they come. Uh, pray for our neighbor over here, Hazel Ward. Um, Hazel just uh, she's recovering from uh, a fall, uh, but I think Hazel is ready to uh, go to long-term care of some kind, you know, like assisted living or something. So this is a transitional time for her. Uh, continue to remember Diana uh, as she seeks uh, medical help for those adhesions that she has every year, uh, praying that she'll find relief and hopefully uh, surgery uh, that has helped her in the past. She's looking to have that surgery again, but she's having a hard time finding a surgeon to do, the, do that surgery. Uh, Debbie asks that we pray for her co-worker, Karen, and uh, she, uh, she may have to have a pacemaker and also, we pray for her husband, David, uh, who uh, is recovering from uh, surgery. And uh, I, we have a dear friend up in New York City, uh, who uh, her name is Kat, Kat Posey. Uh, and she asked for prayers for a work situation that she's having kind of a stressful time at work. And uh, I would ask you for traveling mercy. I'm going to New York uh, this weekend for a wedding. A young man that grew up here in wow. in, uh, wow. in church. So uh, when when you grow up in a church, driving? I'm driving. Yeah, wow. so, yeah going wow. she's not. Okay. No, she yeah. has to has to work, and so uh, it's up around Cooperstown, mm -hmm. Cooperstown, New York. So uh, I'm leaving tomorrow afternoon and coming back Sunday. So I appreciate your prayers. Of course. And uh, Debbie's aunt Carolyn. Uh, has come up now. She's with uh, Debbie's dad in Woodbridge, visiting him for a couple of months. Uh, you know, her husband recently passed away suddenly. And uh, so she's planning to move to uh, Washington State where her son lives. And uh, Sonny Combs, remember Sonny? I think she's coming home uh, this week. She's been down taking care of Lynn uh, in, uh, in South Carolina. And Lynn is doing better, thank God. And uh, Sonny is uh, planning on coming home this week, hopefully. So uh, 
continue to remember Lynn as she recovers from uh, emergency surgery and and so we're thankful for that. And then our friend Lori Oaks, uh, the counselor that oh, meets yeah. here, uh, her father has been in the hospital. Oh, okay. uh, went suddenly uh, earlier this week, but he was hopeful to come home today. Yeah, okay. So uh, pray for Lori and uh, Lori's family. Okay, so that's all the ones that I had. You guys got any other? Pr- yes, ma'am? Uh, Jerome's aunt Alice passed away. Mm. And um, she doesn't have any children, so her husband's in the hospital. His sister we visit today. Um, her husband Ed is not doing well. At all. Uh, he won't use a walker, won't use a cane, but yet he'll take three steps and stop because he can't move any further. Um, it's very, very, very hard on Jamie as a caregiver. Sure. And I encourage you today to seek help. There's so much help out there available. But people don't realize that. Mm-hmm. They, yeah, they don't. They and don't, some yeah. people are too proud mm-hmm. to look into it is the other thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't want strangers in their homes, uh, like Wendy had said at one time. But it's helping her. Right. And then she right. gets to talk to them. She right. gets to share God's love with them. Amen. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, we have a, a elderly neighbor, more elderly than us. <laughs> and he it's is a sliding speaking, scale. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he it keeps seeing... sliding further, further down the scale. Yeah, now he's not that old. Anymore. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, he's seeking someone to come in and help, uh, like a handyman type of thing, because him and his wife are sick. Uh, so it's Richard and Pat, and they're believers. And he called me a few weeks ago to ask me about something, which led to something else, which led to... You know, if you really need help and can't find any right now, call on us if it's something we can help you with. Sure. And he did. He called today. And, of course, I volunteered to run. Absolutely. <laughs> no, I made sure it was okay with him. Sure. First. But my heart just goes out to them. Uh, the livability that we as older people would like to stay in our homes as long as possible Uh is possible if we can find the right people to help us. Mm-hmm. And they have a beautiful home way back in the back there, and but they have quite a few acres. And so with that comes other responsibilities, you know. So uh, my heart just goes out to the people that, like the neighbor here. Sure. Uh, you want to stay yep. in your home as long as you can. You're right. You're sure. Probably yep. going to be in the nursing home now. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a major decision to go to a nursing home. Yeah. If you're that just there for rehabilitation, that's one thing. But most of the time you go, you might not be coming home again. Right. Yeah. Right. So Richard and Pat. Richard uh, and Pat. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my. Uh, check with Brother Randy on, on Sunday morning because he does that type of uh, thing Well, he was folks. looking for, he said he couldn't really afford someone if that was their job, not knowing what Randy sure. charges. But he was looking for someone like a, uh, he's had like, um, uh, he calls them kids that have graduated high school and are in, or seeking part-time work while they're going through college or things right. like that. And he had one up until more recently. He's had several along the way. Okay. So, uh, but no, uh, I can check with Randy. But we're in the Mount Airy area. Right, and that's a little yeah. bit away from me. He's up because, in Walkersville. Uh, yeah. uh, someone suggested somebody else from church, but he lives in Hagerstown. So oh, that okay. was too far to right. travel. Right. Now. We're just part time work. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. All right. But I know if we pray about it, God, God, will God has the right death. person. That's exactly yes. right. Amen. Yes. All right. Anybody else? No, I just have a praise report. My kids went to youth group tonight, so. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. And it had nothing to do with me. Get it? Yeah. It had nothing to do with me. It wasn't anything I did. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. Oh, salvation for me. Salvation. Amen. Uh, Yeah. A big one always. And God knows who. Yeah. All our prodigals. Yes. Wait, what'd you say? The prodigals. All our prodigals. Yeah. Children. 
Amen. Yeah. All right. Good. Thank you, guys. Let's uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Father, we come to you tonight. Just I'm thankful for everyone who's gathered here in the room, and for all those that may be watching on Facebook. And we just uh, we praise you, Lord. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for this passage from John chapter nine, the man born blind. And Father, it, it ta- teaches us a great lesson of how simple our relationship with you is, but it's very profound. And uh, we know that, uh, you know, as uh, Stephanie said, it's, it, it involves repentance to turn away from our sin and turn to God, turn to Jesus. And so we thank you for that knowledge of our salvation and, and the fellowship that we enjoy. We thank you for each one that is here tonight. We ask your blessings on their families. And Father, I lift up all the ones that have requested prayer tonight, each one and, and uh Father, if there's some that uh, weren't mentioned or some that I might forget, Lord, we know that uh, all of these folks are known by you and and you know every person's heart. And I just pray for each one. I pray for uh, Bruce, uh, G's uh, brother-in-law, Lord, and we know that uh, he's in a bad way. And and, but Lord, uh, there's hope. And I pray that you would uh, lay your healing hand and blessing upon him, Lord, and just accomplish your purpose in his life for Nora. Uh, continued blessings and Jimmy Lord thank you for continuing to heal him for brother Cliff as he is in the hospital Lord I pray for those that are caring for him I pray for uh, quick healing Lord and and I pray that for Sharon as uh, as he's there in the hospital and I pray for Tanja and Rose and Lord uh, bless that by the main family I, I pray Lord for Tanja's strengthening and father just give her strength uh, that comes from uh, from places that she doesn't, she's not aware of, Lord, that you'll just uh, supernaturally give her the strength that she needs in this time. And I pray for Rose, thankful that she's doing better. And I know that it's good for her to be uh, in the home there with uh, with Tanja and Ed. And I pray you continue to bless those guys. And Lord, for Hazel, our neighbor, you know the needs that she has, Lord. And I just pray for the very best for her. If, it's, if she needs to sell her home and and to move into other arrangements, Lord, just give, help her with that and bring folks along beside her to, to give her guidance. Father, I, I pray for Diana, our dear friend, uh, who needs a touch and healing from you. And Father, I boldly ask you to heal her, that she wouldn't need surgery, Lord, that, that you would just take this away from her and that she would be well. And Father, if it's your will that she would, that she would see a surgeon, Lord, I pray that you'd open that door, that she would soon have relief. Father, I pray for Debbie's co-worker, Karen, and her husband, David. You know the things that they need. I pray for healing. For Kat, my friend Kat in New York, Lord, uh, you know the work situation. And and we know, uh, Father, that that seems to be that Satan is working big time, but you're bigger than Satan is. Father, that you can, uh, none of those things surprise you. Father, that I pray for your peace to wash over Kat, to her know that she's right in the right place in the center of your will. Pray for Debbie's Aunt Carolyn as she's visiting her brother, Debbie's dad, and I pray that's a wonderful visit. Just grant her peace, Lord, and grace, and as she makes plans to uh, move to to Washington State, Lord, that you'd uh, protect her and keep her there. And uh, Father, I know that she's grieving the loss of her husband. Mm -hmm. Father, for Miss Betty, I I pray for her. Betty Bishop, uh, continue to uh, improve her, Lord. We're, We're thankful for the improvements that she's made, and Father, we again, we boldly ask for you to, to lay your healing hand upon her. Bless Wendy, and uh, we know that she's, her back uh, is causing her some problems. I pray that you would relieve her of that, Lord, and bless those uh, that are coming into the home and caring for her. And I pray that they would hear the message and see the message of Jesus uh, in, in that home. Pray for Miss Sunny as she uh, makes plans to come home. I pray for Lynn, continue to heal her. Thankful, Lord, that you brought her through this. We know uh, that it was your will that she would be uh, spared at this time. And I pray, Lord, that you bless Lynn and Ben and uh, Matt and, and the Deal family, Lord, and just, just protect them and guide them. For Miss Lori, our friend Lori Oaks, her dad was in the hospital, Lord. I pray that he got to come home today, that he's doing better. Continue to bless him. Bless, bless Jerome's family at the passing of Aunt Alice, Lord, and I know it's a very difficult time and, uh, you know, family uh, is not a lot of family around, but I pray your blessings upon them and uh, just guide their steps. And uh, for Jerome's sister, 
uh, and her uh, husband, Ed. Uh, we know that caregiving there is a very difficult thing. And I pray for Ed, Lord. I, I pray that you would just open his eyes to see his needs. And uh, Father, that he would uh, get the help that he needs. And I pray that you bless in that situation. Pray for uh, Richard and Pat, uh, their neighbors, uh, Jerome and Doris, his neighbors, and provide. Lord, we know you know that just the right guy or, or girl to come and help in their situation. And I pray that you would just connect those folks. Lord, I praise you for uh, the things that you're doing in our lives. Uh, Father, we see your hand at work and we know that you're with us and, and we thank you for that knowledge. And bless our families, our kids, Lord. I pray your blessings upon each one of them. Uh, Father, I do pray for family members who are lost, who need to be saved. Uh, like that blind man, Lord, that they would uh, they see their need for Jesus. And uh, Father, just just thank you for uh, for guiding our steps and, and giving us the things that we need. I pray, Lord, for traveling mercy as I head to New York and, and bless the Mercer family and uh, bless Ryan Itzel as he comes to preach for us and, and uh, his uh, brother-in-law will be leading the, the worship and I pray it's a, a great time and I'll be missing our folks here, but I pray for traveling mercy and grace. Lord, we love you. We thank you for loving us. Thank you for these dear people who are who I'm wonderfully call my friends. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. Isn't it amazing that you were praying to, the, to, the, to <laughs> praying to Jesus, the same one that we're just reading about? Right. Like, to right. That, just to, yeah, yeah, I was like, that's something. Yeah. Wow. All right. So our closing song is In the Sweet by and by. Thanks. You're welcome. You guys know that song? In yes, the I know this. All right. I know. All right. I'm not going to sing it well. Oh, but that's but all right. I know it very well. Yes. 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 There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. To our bountiful Father above, we will offer the tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His love and the blessing that hallow our days in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore Amen. 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 All right. Oh, so good. Excellent so job, good. guys. Thanks for joining Thanks. us, everyone. Yep. Thanks.